creating a 12D user menu file. So I'm hoping you're finding this via the YouTube video on our 12D wiki page. Further down on the wiki page for creating the user file, we've actually provided an example zip file, which you can download. Just save that to your desktop or somewhere. We'll, I'll show you how to install that in a second, but it will give you some standard user menus. So that'll save you a bit of work and, and show you some of the coding already in there. Similar to what I've done with the toolbars.4d file. So we'll just get into that. And see, I've downloaded it to the desktop here. I'm just going to put that into a testing directory that I'm going to use and expand that out or extract all the data to this directory for now. So I'll extract that data out. You can see it's created this extra directory here under the examples here. Um, we've got a user menu directory and also a user menu.4d file. So I actually want to move those directories from that location into my C drive. So again, like the toolbars, we've got C, 12D, the version I'm using, and the user directory, the dollar, dollar user directory. So I'm going to grab that information from there, cut it, and paste it into there. You can see again my user directory is pretty empty at the moment so you can see those files have been pasted across. Um, if I have a look at 12D at the moment there's actually nothing in the user menu there's just the standard options that come with 12D but when I restart the project you'll see this file the user menus.4D file will be loaded in and that will then call other additional information from the user directory. So let's have a look. Let's restart. Okay, so 12 is back now and you can see if I go under the user directory, I've now got these additional four options in here. One for survey, actually I can actually pin these up. So what I'll do is just quickly, I'll just quickly click on the, the square brackets at the top. I can pin that one up and then I can rip these off if you wanted to. So you can see the directories there, or sorry, the options that I've provided to you in, in this example file. So you can also rip them directly from here. You just need to come across to the square brackets and select them there also. So we've got these options. And how this is actually working is when 12D starts, it's actually like the toolbars, as I said, it's calling this up. And you can see we're using this same option here. There's the user menu at the top, the button name, which is what you're getting when you fly down here, the actual individual button names. And then they've got a walk right and the walk right is then calling up the name of the button again. So that's, and it's calling up these individual files. So just to try and make it a little bit easier, a little bit neater, again, each of these um, are silently including an individual, another, um, essentially another notepad file or another text file, which the menus keep all the code in. So essentially this is just a, a nice front end and then it's including some additional text files these one, two, three, four different files for each of the different toolbars that we have there, or sorry, the user menus, and they're all housed in this user directory. So I'm going to open that one up and you'll see here, again, we've just got the numbers there, number one, two, three, and four, which relate to each of the different user menus. And we've got a whole bunch of other SLX files in here. We've got an example chain in there for you as well. Again, a macro in there, because like the toolbars, as I said, they will call in each of those. So just have a look at the coding just open one of these into notepad and place that up there. I do like to color this up a little bit so you can see the code a little bit easier. So there's the comment at the top, the button, um, and then there's the command itself. Now the button, to actually get the line in there, that actually is basically just running a macro that actually isn't doing anything. So those little lines in there, it's a bit of a spacer, but those actually are just blank buttons that aren't going to do anything for, for you at all. And it just spaces out your menu a little bit clearer so the users can see what's happening there. So you've got buttons, and then down the bottom here, the name of the menu. So because the sharing one, or well, the survey reduction is its own menu, you can see it's just got the, the menu itself. And then we've got additional buttons underneath there as well. If you wanted to walk right, different ones there. So you've got the, the menu itself, and then the button for the control entry, the traverse entry, and all those ones as well. So you'll notice the, this formatting is very similar to the toolbars that you've got the button and the command. There's just no additional third line, which is the icon usually, which actually gives you the pretty pictures of the icons of the toolbars. So the menu is exactly the same, the format's exactly the same. So making a toolbar back into a user menu is pretty easy. You basically just need to take out those icon, those lines of code, and it will show up pretty quickly for you. I did want to go into a little bit more detail in this presentation about actually how to create these um, SLX files. Again, the, the files that were provided to you, you'll probably note they're in a different couple of groups. They've got these ones for DES, which really do relate to the design 
screen layout files. We've got some there for the drainage, so for some of these drainage options that are there. And we've got some there for serve at the front there, which relate to the survey menu. So that's how that's broken up to in terms of the screen layout files that we've provided as an example. Creating the screen layout files is fairly simple. You just need to go into a command that you'd want to create or, or use. One I can think of that's pretty handy is maybe be doing your contour smooth and labeling. So normally when you open it up in 12D, you'll notice that all the fields are blank. Where in the user menu, if you were to come into the user menu and select it, creating a triangulation, where have we got here? Contouring, survey tin, select that. It's actually going to call up a panel, the same panel, but you can see it's already been pre-filled out. So that makes it a lot easier for users. They don't need to guess. They already know what the tin name's going to be called. And it basically just means that there can be some standardization about what the panels are going to be are going to use and therefore you'll get consistency in the office. So you can make some changes to these if you needed to, changing colors, changing line styles and things like that. To make a screen layout file, one of these SLX files, essentially we come up to the little 12D icon and we left mouse button over the actual 12D icon button itself and we come down to the dump option here and we dump the name of the panel. So typically these screen layout files, the way you filled out the panel itself, and they'll put a, a .slx at the back there. It's, a, it's a, actually an XML file in the background that's going to be saved off. So if I just hit dump, um, it will write it to the current project directory. So if I came up and, and selected the Explorer button, you'll see there'll be an SLX file now within that project. And I'd then again need to move that SLX file from this directory into the, the user toolbar directory if I wanted it to be called up in the toolbars. So you can customize these. You can even have multiple panels on the on the one SLX file. So what we can do is also maybe do a clean option where we'd say let's go and clean a model out. I don't even know what I've got in here. I don't have anything in here. So let me just go and put a model name in here. There we go. Put a line in there so we've got something to fill out. And if I dump this again, you can see it's coming up with the name of the panel, clean clean model. But if I let, click on the little yellow folder here, I can actually save it into the same screen layout file before. It's just that when you do it a second time and you dump it, it'll actually ask you if you want to replace the current file, which would mean that that panel's not saved, or you can append the two panels next to each other. So if I do that, I've dumped it, I finish, I can actually finish all these panels. Now because it is living, all well, this SLX files in the working directory at the moment, to bring them back, because the menus might be dumped from right across the main menu, you come under File, Layout Inputs, Layout, sorry, Layout Inputs, and you can see the name of the SLX file there. And if I read it in, you'll notice it's opened up both the panels exactly in the same location as they were last time as well. So I could then save that screen layout file from that directory back in the user and then the, the user menu would then call that file in. If you're ever wanting just to call up standard 12D panels like the, the clean, I guess, and you're thinking, oh, that's the button I want to have, I don't need it to be filled out, then you can basically again come here and look at dumping the panel and that's quite often what the 12D command name is. So we looked before at some of the screen layout files that'll be used uh, but if sometimes if they don't have a screen layout file they've just got check break lines that will be calling the standard check break lines duplicate vertices identical for string so essentially it's come in here check break lines and you can see what we've got here if I come down and go dump you can see the name of the panel just the underscores are basically the spaces in in the in the file name there and that's how 12d will basically just call up a standard name if that's what you want to bring up as your as your menu option the menus that we provided were basically put together a, a working format we're thinking basically that most projects need to possibly go through this standard format of your inputting data creating triangulation creating the contours for the for the survey and the, and the triangulation there and then getting into some of the design steps creating super alignments editing editing in some snippets applying your mtf files doing your curb returns and then creating your design tin so there's not too many design jobs that won't need to go through some sort of a process like this. So it's more of a workflow also that we can set up for users to help them on their way and standardize the customization for them. I hope that's helped and good luck with making your own user menus.